What if I told you that the foundations of our civilization are technologies and our knowledge with a legacy of an ancient race of extraterrestrial beings sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, right? But for those who subscribe to the Anunnaki theory, this isn't mere fiction but a plausible explanation of human history. Today, we're embarking on a journey to a hypothetical celestial body, the so-called Planet X or Nibiru, exploring the mythology surrounding the Anunnaki and their alleged influence on humanity. Planet X, more commonly referred to as Nibiru or the Ninth Planet, is a theoretical planet that's believed by some to exist on the extreme outer edges of our solar system. This concept isn't a new one. In fact, it has roots going back to the 19th century when scientists like Percival Lowell postulated the existence of an unseen planet to explain the irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. However, the discovery of Neptune's moon Triton and further observations led to the dismissal of the series. Fast forward to the 21st century, and the idea of Planet X has been resurrected, not as Nibiru home to an alien civilization, but as a potential ninth planet in our solar system, a world perhaps 10 times the mass of Earth and as much as 20 times farther from the Sun than Neptune. The proposed existence of this Planet 9 comes from the strange clustering and distinct tilt of a group of high perihelion Sedna-like objects. These are distant minor planets that have orbits taking them hundreds, even thousands of astronomical units from the Sun. Scientists Konstantin Batagan and Michael E. Brown at Caltech presented strong evidence of this unseen massive perturbo in 2016. They noticed that a group of icy objects beyond Neptune, known as trans-Neptunian objects or TNOs, had odd orbits that appeared to be influenced by the gravitational tug of a larger distant unseen planet. However, despite extensive searches and numerous candidate objects, this ninth planet remains supposedly unconfirmed. Some scientists propose alternative explanations for the TNO's peculiar orbits, such as the collective gravitational influence of a distant disk of icy bodies. Nevertheless, the allure of a hidden world in our own cosmic backyard continues to captivate scientists and lay people alike. The Anunnaki, a term that means, those of royal blood, or, those who from heaven to earth came are a group of deities that appear in the mythological traditions of the ancient Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians. According to these ancient Mesopotamian cultures, the Anunnaki were the most powerful deities in the pantheon, descendants of En, the god of the heaven. Their primary function was to decree the fates of humanity. But the story of the Anunnaki takes on a more intriguing form in the hands of Zechariah Sitchin a controversial author best known for promoting an alternative interpretation of human history in his Earth Chronicles series. Sitchin proposed that the Anunnaki were not mythological deities but rather extraterrestrial beings from a planet in our solar system beyond Neptune, the aforementioned planet X or Nibiru. Sitchin's theories, although not supported by mainstream historians or scientists, draw upon his own interpretations of ancient Sumerian texts and the iconography and symbolism of Mesopotamian art. He suggests that the Anunnaki came to Earth around 450,000 years ago in search of minerals, particularly gold, to save their dying planet by using it to repair their damaged atmosphere. Moreover, Sitchin postulates that these ancient astronauts genetically engineered Homo sapiens as a labor force. He credits the Anunnaki with accelerating our evolution and introducing advancements in human civilization, including the concepts of agriculture, law, architecture, and even the fundamentals of astronomy. Interestingly, several ancient cultures indeed have stories about gods descending from the heavens, teaching humanity various aspects of civilization, from the fallen angels called the Watchers in the Book of Enoch, who shared forbidden knowledge with mankind, to the Vimana writing gods of Hindu mythology and the feathered serpent deity Quetzalcoatl of the Aztecs, who was said to have brought knowledge of agriculture and the calendar system to humans. There are these pervasive narratives of sky gods uplifting mankind. But why would such advanced beings decide to come to Earth of all places? As per the theories espoused by Zechariah Sitchin, the answer lies in a metal we're all quite familiar with, gold. Gold has always held a special place in human history, seen as a symbol of wealth, power, and divinity. But for the Anunnaki, it apparently had a far more practical purpose. The idea is that the Anunnaki's home planet, Nibiru, had a severely damaged atmosphere, not unlike the concerns we have about our own ozone layer. The Anunnaki, being an advanced civilization, knew how to mitigate this problem by suspending gold particles in Nibiru's atmosphere. 
The gold would act as a shield, reflecting harmful radiation back into space and insulating their planet, much like how we use reflective materials to guard against the sun's heat. However, Nibiru's gold resources were dwindling, and this is where Earth entered the picture. Our blue planet, according to Sitchin's interpretation of Sumerian texts, was rich in this precious metal, which ultimately led to the Anunnaki's arrival on Earth. It suggested that they established mines, particularly in Africa, where today we find some of the richest gold deposits in the world. It's an intriguing theory, and it mirrors some of our own contemporary interests in space exploration. For instance, today we talk about asteroid mining as a potentially lucrative enterprise because of the rich deposits of precious metals that asteroids contain. So the idea of an advanced civilization scouring the cosmos for resources isn't entirely outlandish. When we think of gold, we often picture it as a symbol of wealth and power, used to create artifacts, adorn temples, or be fashioned into jewelry. But according to the Anunnaki theories, gold was more than just an ornamental or symbolic resource, it was a solution to a planet-wide problem. As we discussed earlier, the Anunnaki's home planet of Nibiru supposedly had a compromised atmosphere. The Anunnaki sought to repair this by using gold, a resource that was apparently scarce on Nibiru but abundant here on Earth. But why gold, you might ask? Interestingly, gold has a number of properties that make it uniquely suited to such a task. It's highly reflective, able to block heat and light, and it's incredibly resistant to corrosion. In a way, gold could act as an extremely effective insulator. If suspended in an atmosphere, reflecting harmful solar radiation back into space while keeping the desirable conditions intact. In fact, we see a bit of a parallel in our own space endeavors. For instance, the visors on astronaut helmets are coated with a thin layer of gold to protect them from the unfiltered sunlight in space. We also use gold in our satellites and spacecraft for similar reasons. So the idea of using gold in such a manner might not be as far-fetched as it seems. However, while the notion is scientifically plausible, the theory of the Anunnaki using Earth's gold for this purpose remains unsubstantiated. There's no solid archaeological or historical evidence to suggest that ancient extraterrestrials mined Earth for gold. The narrative stems from a certain interpretation of Sumerian texts, which is not universally accepted. The importance of gold to the Anunnaki and the resultant interaction with humans, as per the theory, does paint a fascinating picture of our ancient history. Those who subscribe to the Anunnaki theory believe that these beings had a major role to play in the development of human civilization. Some say that they essentially jump-started our society, providing us with knowledge and tools that greatly accelerated our progress. The Sumerians, one of the earliest civilizations on Earth, are often mentioned in these discussions. They were known for their advances in astronomy, mathematics, and law, among other fields. Some argue that these advances were too sophisticated to have developed without outside influence. Hence, they postulate the Anunnaki imparted these advancements upon the Sumerians. An interesting part of this theory includes the origins of written language. Some believe the Anunnaki gifted the Sumerians with cuneiform, one of the earliest known systems of writing. By giving humans the ability to record and pass on knowledge, the Anunnaki allegedly elevated human culture and set us on the path to becoming the technologically advanced civilization we are today. Proponents of the Anunnaki theory often point to depictions in ancient Sumerian art and iconography that seem to show human-like beings of larger stature, sometimes depicted with wings or surrounded by symbols of power and divinity. The claim are the Anunnaki, and their presence in such artwork is further proof of their influence. Believers in the Anunnaki theory often highlight similarities between various ancient cultures as further evidence of extraterrestrial intervention. For instance, the story of a flood and a savior figure who rides it out in a ship, which is seen in both the Sumerian epic of Gilgamesh and the biblical story of Noah, is thought to suggest a common origin. Are these independent stories or echoes of an ancient memory shared by all humans? Moreover, across various civilizations, from Sumerians to ancient Egyptians, Mayans, and even Native American tribes, there are references to sky gods or celestial beings who descended from the heavens. Could these be disparate accounts of the same extraterrestrial visitors, the Anunnaki? Then there's the matter of pyramids. These majestic structures were built in different parts of the world by civilizations that supposedly never had contact with each other the ancient Egyptians, the Mayans, and civilizations in ancient China. Each set of pyramids aligns with certain celestial bodies or events. It's an intriguing correlation that prompts the question, 
Was this a coincidence or is there something more to it? But as compelling as these parallels may be, they are not universally accepted as evidence of Anunnaki's influence. Many scholars attribute these similarities to the convergent evolution of civilizations, the idea that different societies independently arrived at similar cultural practices and beliefs. Others theorize about the possibility of ancient cultural exchange that we don't fully understand yet. It's important to keep in mind that just because something isn't fully understood, it doesn't automatically mean that the explanation is extraterrestrial. So are we the descendants of an advanced alien civilization, or are the Anunnaki tales simply part of our rich tapestry of mythology, the product of imaginative storytelling and our inherent fascination with the unknown? As of now, the lines between fact and fiction remain blurred. But as we continue to explore our universe and uncover the secrets of our past, we might someday stumble upon definitive answers. Until then, let's keep probing, questioning, and marveling at the captivating mysteries of our existence. Welcome to our journey through history as we explore the fascinating story of the Babylonian Empire and its connections to the Anunnaki, a group of powerful deities in ancient Mesopotamian mythology. The Babylonian Empire was one of the greatest civilizations of the ancient world, known for its monumental architecture, scientific achievements, and influential legal code. But before we delve into the incredible accomplishments of this empire, let's start by exploring the Anunnaki's role in shaping the religious and cultural landscape of ancient Mesopotamia. Hello and welcome to life's biggest questions. Now, that's been said, let's continue. The Anunnaki were a group of gods and goddesses worshipped by the various cultures of ancient Mesopotamia, including the Sumerians, Akkadians, and Babylonians. As descendants of the Akkadians, the Babylonians inherited many aspects of their predecessors' religious beliefs, including the veneration of the Anunnaki. These deities played a significant role in the lives of the Babylonians, who believed that the gods controlled the forces of nature and the fate of humanity. The Anunnaki were invoked in prayers, rituals, and religious texts, and their stories were passed down through generations in the form of myths and legends. And now, with the foundation of the Anunnaki's influence in mind, Let's explore the rise, achievements, and eventual fall of the Babylonian Empire. The rise of the Babylonian Empire can be traced back to the early 2nd millennium BCE, during a time of great political upheaval in Mesopotamia. The region was divided into several city-states, each ruled by its own king, and conflicts between these city-states were common. It was in this turbulent environment that the Babylonian Empire began to take shape. The city of Babylon itself was founded around 1894 BCE by the Amorite king Sumu Abum. However, it was under the rule of Hammurabi, reigned 1792-1750 B.C.E., the sixth king of the first Babylonian dynasty, that the empire truly began to emerge as a major power in the region. Hammurabi was an ambitious ruler who sought to expand his kingdom's influence and territory through a combination of diplomatic alliances, strategic marriages, and military conquests. He managed to bring the majority of Mesopotamia under Babylonian control. One of Hammurabi's most notable military achievements was the conquest of the rival city-state of Larsa, which gave him control over the economically important trade routes along the Euphrates River. He also conquered other neighboring city-states such as Ashnuna, Mari, and Ilam, further expanding his empire's reach during his reign. Hammurabi not only focused on military expansion but also on the internal development and administration of his kingdom. He implemented a series of reforms aimed at improving the lives of his subjects, such as the construction of irrigation canals to enhance agricultural production and the establishment of a centralized bureaucracy to govern the empire more efficiently. Hammurabi is perhaps best known for his legal code, the Code of Hammurabi, which was a comprehensive set of laws covering various aspects of daily life, such as trade, property rights, and family law. This code, inscribed on a stone steel, is considered one of the earliest and most complete legal codes in human history and provides valuable insight into the society, values, and governance of the Babylonian Empire. After Hammurabi's death, his successors continued to expand and consolidate the empire's power, even as it faced various challenges from both internal and external forces. Over the centuries, the Babylonian Empire would experience periods of decline and resurgence, marked by the rise and fall of different dynasties and rulers. The Babylonian Empire, which thrived during the 2nd and 1st millennia BCE, left a significant legacy through its numerous achievements.
Here are some of the most notable Babylonian achievements. Architecture. Babylon was known for its grandiose architecture, including the city walls, the Ishtar Gate, the Etaminanki, a massive ziggurat temple, and the fabled Hanging Gardens of Babylon. The Hanging Gardens, considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, were a series of terraces filled with exotic plants and trees supported by complex irrigation systems. Babylonian astronomers made substantial advancements in the field of astronomy. They meticulously observed and documented celestial phenomena, leading to the development of the first known system for predicting the future positions of planets. The Babylonians also created the lunar calendar, which divided the year into 12 months based on the cycles of the moon. Mathematics. The Babylonians pioneered the base 60 numeral system, which is still used today in our measurements of time, minutes and seconds, and angles, degrees, minutes, and seconds. This advanced mathematical system allowed the Babylonians to perform complex calculations required for engineering projects, solve various practical problems, and even calculate the square root and cube root of numbers. The Babylonians used the cuneiform script, a system of writing that used wedge-shaped marks made on clay tablets. They made significant contributions to literature, producing works such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the world's oldest known works of literature. Babylonian scribes also created extensive libraries, which housed vast collections of religious, historical, and scientific texts. The Code of Hammurabi. Under the rule of King Hammurabi, the Babylonians established one of the earliest known legal codes, the Code of Hammurabi. Inscribed on a large stone steel, it covered a wide range of civil and criminal matters. It provided a detailed account of the social structure, values, and legal rights of the people living in the Babylonian Empire. Medicine. Babylonian physicians were skilled in diagnosing and treating various ailments. They used a combination of empirical observations, medical texts, and incantations to treat their patients. While their understanding of the human body was limited by today's standards, the Babylonians made significant contributions to the development of medical knowledge. Trade and Commerce The Babylonian Empire was a center of trade and commerce in the ancient world, benefiting from its strategic location along the Euphrates River. Babylonian merchants traded with other civilizations in the region, exchanging goods such as textiles, grains, metals, and spices. These achievements showcase the ingenuity and creativity of the Babylonian people, who left a lasting impact on the fields of science, art, and culture. The legacy of the Babylonian Empire continues to influence our modern world as we build upon the foundations laid by this ancient civilization. The decline and fall of the Babylonian Empire were a result of a combination of internal and external factors that weakened the empire over time, ultimately leading to its collapse. After the death of Nebuchadnezzar II in 562 BCE, the Babylonian Empire experienced a period of political instability marked by a series of weak and ineffective rulers. This instability weakened the empire's ability to govern its vast territories effectively and left it vulnerable to external threats. Economic Decline the Babylonian Empire's economy relied heavily on agriculture and trade. However, as the empire expanded, it faced challenges in maintaining its vast irrigation systems, leading to decreased agricultural productivity. Additionally, competition from other regional powers disrupted trade routes, further weakening the economy. The expansion of the Babylonian Empire brought with it the incorporation of diverse ethnic groups and cultures. As the empire declined, tensions between these groups began to rise leading to social unrest and weakening the unity of the empire. Rise of the Persians The rise of the Persian Empire under Cyrus the Great presented a significant external threat to the Babylonian Empire. The Persians were a powerful and ambitious force, and they began to expand their territories at the expense of the Babylonians. Fall of Babylon to the Persians In 539 BCE, the Persian army led by Cyrus the Great marched on the city of Babylon. The Babylonians, weakened by internal strife and economic decline, were unable to mount a strong defense against the invading forces. The Persian army entered the city without much resistance, marking the end of the Babylonian Empire. After the conquest, Cyrus the Great incorporated the Babylonian territories into his expanding Persian Empire and treated the conquered people with relative tolerance and respect. Hellenistic Period the conquest of the Persian Empire by Alexander the Great in 331 BCE marked the beginning of the Hellenistic period in Mesopotamia. The region was subsequently absorbed into the Seleucid Empire, one of the successor states of Alexander's empire. This led to the gradual decline of Babylonian culture and influence. 
The rise of the Parthian and Sassanid empires further diminished the remnants of Babylonian culture in the region. These empires, which controlled Mesopotamia at different points in time, introduced new cultural, religious, and political influences that would come to dominate the region, leading to the eventual disappearance of the distinct Babylonian identity. The decline and fall of the Babylonian Empire were due to a combination of internal factors, such as political instability, economic decline, and social unrest, as well as external pressures, such as the rise of powerful neighboring empires. The fall of Babylon to the Persians marked the end of the Babylonian Empire, and subsequent conquests and cultural shifts in the region led to the gradual disappearance of Babylonian culture and influence. The Babylonians, like other Mesopotamian civilizations such as the Sumerians and Akkadians, believed in a variety of gods including the Anunnaki. The lasting legacy of the Anunnaki and the Babylonian Empire can be seen in several aspects. Mythology and Religion The Anunnaki played a central role in Mesopotamian religious beliefs, shaping the spiritual lives of the Babylonians and influencing their worldview. Many of the gods in the Babylonian pantheon, such as Marduk and Lil, were associated with the Anunnaki. These gods were believed to have immense power over the natural world, and their influence can still be seen in the religious and mythological texts that have survived to this day. Creation of Mankind According to ancient Mesopotamian mythology, the Anunnaki created human beings to serve as their laborers. The creation of humanity by the gods is a common theme in many ancient cultures, and Anunnaki's role in this process has left a lasting impression on the cultural memory of the region. The mythology and religious beliefs of the Babylonian Empire, including the stories of the Anunnaki, influenced later civilizations in the region, such as the Assyrians, and even spread to other parts of the ancient world. For example, some of the stories from Mesopotamian mythology, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, have parallels in the Bible and other ancient texts. Art and Architecture The Anunnaki were often depicted in Babylonian art, including statues, reliefs, and frescoes. These artistic representations of the gods reflect the importance of the Anunnaki in Babylonian society and provide a glimpse into the religious beliefs and practices of the time. Modern Interpretations The Anunnaki have captured the imagination of modern researchers and writers, leading to various interpretations and theories about their role in human history. Some suggest that the Anunnaki were actually extraterrestrial beings who visited Earth in ancient times while others see them as symbolic representations of natural forces or aspects of human consciousness. These modern theories, while speculative, demonstrate the enduring fascination with the Anunnaki and their potential influence on human civilization. The legacy of the Anunnaki and the Babylonian Empire can be seen in various aspects of culture, religion, art, and even modern theories about the origins of humanity. As a central element of Mesopotamian mythology, the Anunnaki continued to capture the imagination of scholars and enthusiasts alike, demonstrating the impact of ancient Babylonian beliefs and achievements on our understanding of human history. In the ancient lands of Mesopotamia, the Assyrians emerged as a powerful and highly advanced civilization, forging an empire that would leave a lasting impact on the history of the region. Their prowess in warfare, innovative architectural feats, and intricate artistic expressions were just a few of the hallmarks of this Iron Age society. Intriguingly, the Assyrians shared a deep connection with the Anunnaki, a group of deities revered throughout ancient Mesopotamian cultures. This divine relationship not only shaped their religious beliefs and practices but also influenced their political structure, art, and literature, leaving a fascinating and complex legacy for future generations to uncover. The Assyrian Empire had its roots in the city-state of Asha, located on the banks of the Tigris River in modern-day northern Iraq. The city was named after the chief deity of the Assyrian pantheon, Asher, who was believed to grant the Assyrian kings their divine mandate to rule. By the late 3rd millennium BCE, Asha had grown into a significant trading hub, benefiting from its strategic location along the Tigris River and its role in the lucrative trade network that connected Mesopotamia with Anatolia and the Mediterranean world. During the 2nd millennium BCE, Asha and its surrounding region came under the control of various Mesopotamian powers, such as the Third Dynasty of Ur and the Old Babylonian Empire. However, by the 14th century BCE, the Assyrians had managed to reassert their independence and expand their influence under the rule of King Asha Ubalidas. Asha Ubalidar I is credited with founding the Middle Assyrian Empire and embarking on an aggressive campaign of conquest which saw the annexation of neighboring territories and the establishment of a pattern of military expansion that would define the Assyrian Empire for centuries to come. 
The Assyrian Empire continued to grow and consolidate its power under a series of strong and ambitious rulers, including Adad Nirari I, Takulti Ninoda I, Antiglath Pilsa, Takulti Ninoda I, and Antiglath Pilsa I. Kings implemented administrative reforms to centralize power and enhance their control over the expanding empire. They also invested heavily in infrastructure projects, such as irrigation systems and road networks, which facilitated the movement of goods and people and enabled the efficient administration of the empire's vast territories. The zenith of Assyrian power came during the Neo-Asian period, which began in the late 10th century BCE with the reign of Adad-Nirari II. This period saw a rapid expansion of the empire under rulers like Ashu Nasirpal II, Shaman Aza III, Tiglath Puza III, Sargon II, Seneca Rib Sir Hayden Nasirpal, and Ashurbanipal. At its peak, the Assyrian Empire stretched from the Persian Gulf in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west and from the borders of modern day Iran in the north to Egypt in the south. Throughout their history, the Assyrians maintained an aggressive policy of expansion and conquest often employing brutal tactics to subdue their enemies and maintain control over their vast territories. This policy allowed them to amass significant wealth and resources, which in turn fueled their continued growth and dominance in the ancient Near East. The following elements contributed to the Assyrians' fearsome reputation on the battlefield. The Assyrians were among the first to use iron extensively in their weapons, giving them a significant advantage over their enemies. Iron was stronger and more durable than bronze, allowing the Assyrians to produce superior swords, spears, and arrowheads. This technological edge enabled them to overcome adversaries who were still reliant on bronze weaponry. The Assyrian army was highly organized, with a clear chain of command and specialized units, including infantry, cavalry, archers, and charioteers. This organization allowed for efficient communication and coordination on the battlefield, ensuring that the Assyrians could effectively execute complex tactics and maneuvers. The Assyrians were masters of siege warfare, employing innovative techniques and technologies to breach fortified cities. They utilized siege towers, battering rams, and sappers to undermine city walls. The Assyrians also employed psychological warfare, such as displaying the severed heads of captured enemy leaders to demoralize their opponents and hasten their surrender. Unlike many of their contemporaries, the Assyrians maintained a large professional standing army that was always ready for battle. This enabled them to respond rapidly to threats and to project their power across the vast expanse of their empire. The Assyrian military made extensive use of cavalry and chariots, which allowed them to exploit the mobility and speed of these units to their advantage on the battlefield. Assyrian cavalry and charioteers were renowned for their skill and ferocity, striking fear into the hearts of their enemies. The Assyrians developed efficient logistical systems to keep their armies supplied on campaign. They built roads and bridges to facilitate the movement of troops and supplies, and they established supply depots and granaries in strategic locations to ensure that their forces were always well provisioned. The Syrian soldiers were rigorously trained from a young age, instilling in them a strong sense of discipline and loyalty to the empire. This training, combined with their advanced weaponry and tactics, made the Assyrian army a formidable force on the battlefield. The Assyrian military was not only the foundation of the empire's success but also an instrument of terror used to suppress revolts and intimidate potential adversaries. The Assyrians' military prowess and innovations played a critical role in their rise to power and their ability to maintain control over their vast territories. The Assyrian Empire, once a dominant power in the ancient Near East, eventually succumbed to a combination of internal and external factors that led to its decline and fall. The following factors contributed to the disintegration of this mighty empire. Overextension and revolts. As the Assyrian Empire expanded, it became increasingly difficult to maintain control over its vast territories. Rebellions and uprisings were common, particularly in the more distant provinces. The Assyrians relied heavily on their fearsome military to suppress these revolts, but this strategy stretched their resources thin and left the empire vulnerable to external threats. Economic strain. The cost of maintaining a large standing army, as well as the construction of grand palaces, temples, and other monumental structures, placed a significant financial burden on the empire. This burden was further exacerbated by the need to fund expensive military campaigns to suppress revolts and defend the empire's borders. Internal strife and political instability, Succession disputes and infighting among the Assyrian elite led to periods of political instability and weakened the central authority of the empire. 
This instability made it more difficult for the Assyrians to respond effectively to external threats and to maintain control over their territories. Environmental factors. Some scholars argue that environmental factors, such as droughts and famines, contributed to the decline of the Assyrian Empire. These natural disasters would have strained the empire's already weakened economy and disrupted its agricultural base, further exacerbating the challenges faced by the Assyrians. External threats. The Assyrian Empire faced increasing pressure from external powers, such as the Medes, Babylonians, and Scythians. As the Assyrians struggled to maintain control over their territories and suppress internal revolts, these external powers sensed an opportunity to challenge Assyrian dominance. In 612 BCE, the Babylonians and Medes formed a coalition and laid siege to the Assyrian capital of Nineveh, ultimately capturing the city and dealing a devastating blow to the Assyrian Empire. The final collapse. After the fall of Nineveh, the Assyrians attempted to regroup and establish a new capital at Haran. However, the empire was too weakened to withstand the continued onslaught from its enemies. In 609 BCE, the Babylonians and Medes captured Haran, marking the end of the Assyrian Empire as a political and military power. The decline and fall of the Assyrian Empire were the result of a complex interplay of internal and external factors. The empire's overextension, economic strain, political instability, and environmental challenges weakened its foundations, while the rise of powerful external adversaries ultimately led to its collapse. The fall of the Assyrian Empire marked the end of an era and paved the way for the rise of new powers in the ancient Near East, such as the Babylonians and the Persians. The Anunnaki, a group of deities in ancient Mesopotamian religions, played a significant role in shaping the beliefs and culture of the Assyrians, who were one of the dominant civilizations of the ancient Near East. The connection between the Assyrians and the Anunnaki can be seen in various aspects of their society, including their religion, art, and literature. The Assyrian religion, like that of other Mesopotamian cultures, was deeply influenced by the worship of the Anunnaki. These gods and goddesses were believed to have created humanity and were responsible for the natural world, as well as for human society and its institutions. Key Anunnaki deities, such as Elul, Aya, and Anu, were central to the Assyrians, and their worship was an essential part of religious life. Assyrian kings claimed to rule by the divine mandate of the Anunnaki, who were believed to have appointed them as their earthly representatives. This divine connection was used to legitimize the rule of the Assyrian kings and to justify their military conquests. Assyrian kings were often depicted in art and literature as receiving the blessing or guidance of the Anunnaki, further reinforcing the idea that their rule was divinely ordained. Depictions of Anunnaki deities are found on Assyrian palace reliefs, sculptures, and other artifacts, often alongside images of the Assyrian king. The winged disc, a symbol associated with the sun god Shamash, another member of the Anunnaki, was a common motif in Assyrian art and was often used as a symbol of divine protection and authority. Modern Interpretations The Anunnaki have captured the imagination of modern researchers and writers, leading to various interpretations and theories about their role in human history. Some suggest that the Anunnaki were actually extraterrestrial beings who visited Earth in ancient times, while others see them as symbolic representations of natural forces or aspects of human consciousness. These modern theories, while speculative, demonstrate the enduring fascination with the Anunnaki and their potential influence on human civilization. The legacy of the Anunnaki and their connection to the Assyrian Empire can be seen in various aspects of culture, religion, art, and even modern theories about the origins of humanity. As a central element of Mesopotamian mythology, the Anunnaki continued to capture the imagination of scholars and enthusiasts alike, demonstrating the impact of ancient Babylonian beliefs and achievements on our understanding of human history. The Anunnaki featured prominently in Assyrian literature and mythology, which was heavily influenced by earlier Sumerian and Akkadian sources. Stories of the Anunnaki, such as the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian creation myth, and the Epic of Gilgamesh, were known and revered by the Assyrians, who often incorporated these tales into their own literary works and inscriptions. As we delve into the intriguing world of the Assyrians, we find a civilization marked by exceptional achievements and indelible ties to the ancient Anunnaki deities. Their divine mandate provided a foundation for the Assyrian Empire's rise to prominence, fueling their military conquests and shaping their cultural expressions. Yet, despite their numerous accomplishments, the Assyrians ultimately succumbed to a combination of internal and external pressures that led to their empire's decline and fall. 
Now, we embark on a journey to uncover the rich history and cultural connections between the Hurrians and Hittites, two influential civilizations that left their mark on the ancient Near East. We'll also investigate their potential ties to the Anunnaki, a group of deities from Mesopotamian mythology whose influence is said to have spanned across numerous ancient cultures. Let's begin by delving deeper into the origins and characteristics of the Hurrians and Hittites. Welcome to life's biggest questions. Let's continue now, shall we? The Hurrians were a prominent civilization that emerged around 2300 BCE and inhabited areas of present-day Syria, Turkey, and Iraq. Their influence peaked during the second millennium BCE, and they left a lasting impact on the region with their unique language, monumental, captivating art, and religious texts. The Hurrians formed various city-states and kingdoms, with the Kingdom of Mitanni being the most powerful Hurrian state, reaching its zenith between 1500 and 1300 BCE. The Hittites, in contrast, were an Indo-European people who established a formidable empire in what is now Turkey and northern Syria. Their civilization thrived during the second millennium BCE, and they were renowned for their military prowess, advanced legal system, and the impressive capital city of Hattusa. The Hittite Empire reached its peak under the rule of Supiluliuma I and his son Mursili II, successfully challenging the supremacy of other major powers, such as Egypt and Babylon, in the region. The Hurrians and Hittites interacted with each other and surrounding civilizations, exchanging goods, ideas, and even occasionally clashing in conflicts. Despite their differing origins, these two civilizations shared some cultural traits, religious practices, and mythological elements, which has sparked the curiosity of historians and researchers seeking to understand their potential connections with the Anunnaki. As we explore the Hurrians and Hittites, one aspect that stands out is their shared pantheon of gods and goddesses, along with overlapping mythological narratives. This common ground has prompted scholars to examine potential connections between these two ancient cultures and the Anunnaki, who were central figures in Mesopotamian mythology. The Anunnaki were considered a group of gods and goddesses descended from the sky god Anu and his consort Ki. They played a significant role in shaping human civilization by bestowing knowledge and technology upon humanity. Many of the deities worshipped by the Hurrians and Hittites shared resemblances and functions with the Anunnaki, which has fueled theories about cultural exchanges between these civilizations and their possible shared origins. One notable example is the Hurrian storm god Teshub, who bears similarities to the Mesopotamian storm god Adad or Hadad, an Anunnaki deity. In Hittite mythology, the storm god Tahunta or Tarhunta also shares similar traits with the Mesopotamian Adad. These parallels suggest that the religious beliefs and mythologies of these cultures may have influenced one another, and that the Anunnaki's presence could have extended to the Hurrians and Hittites. The Hurrians, in particular, adopted and adapted many Sumerian myths into their own religious canon. One such example is the myth of Kumarbi, a Hurrian adaptation of the Sumerian tale of Enlil and Ninlil, which describes a succession of divine rulers. The Hittites, who had a history of assimilating the gods and goddesses of conquered peoples into their pantheon, also absorbed Hurrian deities and myths. Another intriguing aspect of these shared mythologies is the presence of divine beings that descended from the heavens to interact with humans. In both Hurrian and Hittite myths, gods and goddesses often intervened in human affairs, guiding the course of history and shaping the destinies of kings and nations. This theme of divine interaction mirrors the role of the Anunnaki in Mesopotamian mythology, where they were said to have had a direct hand in shaping human civilization. These religious similarities and shared mythological elements between the Hurrians, Hittites, and the Anunnaki offer a fascinating insight into the complex web of cultural exchange and interaction that characterized the ancient Near East. The blending and adaptation of myths and religious practices between these cultures raise intriguing questions about the possible connections between them and the wider influence of the Anunnaki. As we delve deeper into the shared mythologies and cultural practices of the Hurrians and Hittites, we also encounter compelling evidence that suggests a significant influence of the Anunnaki on various aspects of their societies. This includes their legal systems, architectural styles, religious practices, and more. Let's explore some of these areas in more detail. In terms of legal systems, the Hittite Code of Laws shares many similarities with the famous laws of Hammurabi, the Babylonian king who was said to have received his laws directly from the Anunnaki god Marduk. For instance, both legal systems contain a similar structure with a prologue, a list of specific laws, and an epilogue. 
They also feature comparable regulations on property rights, contracts, and punishments for various crimes. This resemblance hints at the possibility of an Anunnaki influence on the development of legal systems in both Hurrian and Hittite societies. Architecturally, both the Hurrians and Hittites constructed monumental structures such as temples, palaces, and fortified cities using advanced engineering techniques that may have been inspired by the Anunnaki. For example, the Hittite capital of Hattusa featured massive fortifications, including walls, gates, and watchtowers, as well as elaborate drainage systems. These architectural achievements suggest a level of technical skill and knowledge that some argue could have been passed down by the Anunnaki. In terms of religious practices, the concept of divine kingship, which was central to both Hurrian and Hittite societies, echoes the role of the Anunnaki gods as rulers of the earth. Kings in both cultures were considered to be divinely chosen and were often associated with particular gods or goddesses. This close relationship between rulers and deities may have served as a means of legitimizing their authority and reinforcing their power, a practice that parallels the role of the Anunnaki in Mesopotamian mythology. The influence of the Anunnaki can also be seen in the importance of astronomy and astrology in both Hurrian and Hittite societies. Just like in Mesopotamia, the movements of celestial bodies were believed to hold great significance, and both cultures developed intricate systems for observing and interpreting these celestial events. This shared focus on astronomy and astrology further supports the idea of a connection between these ancient civilizations and the Anunnaki. Overall, the potential influence of the Anunnaki can be traced in various aspects of Hurrian and Hittite culture, hinting at the possibility that the knowledge and wisdom of these deities were shared across the ancient Near East. But while definitive proof remains elusive, the similarities between these civilizations and their connections to the Anunnaki continue to captivate scholars and researchers who seek to unravel the mysteries of our ancient past. The potential connection between the Hurrians, Hittites, and the Anunnaki is an enthralling subject, and the search for tangible evidence to support these theories is an ongoing endeavor for historians and archaeologists alike. The ancient sites, artifacts, and texts associated with these cultures offer valuable clues about their beliefs, practices, and possible interactions with the Anunnaki. One of the most compelling sources of evidence is the cuneiform tablets found in the ancient cities of the Hurrians and Hittites. These texts provide invaluable information about the religious beliefs, myths, and practices of these civilizations, offering insight into their possible connections with the Anunnaki. By studying these texts and comparing them with Mesopotamian myths and religious documents, researchers can identify parallels and shared themes that suggest a common cultural influence. Archaeological discoveries also offer valuable evidence about the potential connections between these ancient civilizations and the Anunnaki. For instance, Excavations at Hittite and Hurrian sites have uncovered statues, reliefs, and other artistic depictions of gods and goddesses that closely resemble the Anunnaki deities of Mesopotamian mythology. These discoveries lend support to the theory that the religious beliefs and artistic styles of the Hurrians and Hittites were influenced by the Anunnaki. Recent advances in archaeological techniques and technologies, such as remote sensing and ground-penetrating radar, have also facilitated the discovery of previously unknown sites and artifacts. These new findings may provide further evidence of the connections between the Hurrians, Hittites, and the Anunnaki, shedding light on the complex web of cultural exchange that characterized the ancient Near East. As researchers continue to explore the wealth of information contained within ancient texts and archaeological remains, they also seek to establish connections between these civilizations and other cultures throughout the ancient world. This process of uncovering and analyzing the evidence is essential in developing a fuller understanding of the possible influence of the Anunnaki in these ancient societies and the broader context of human history. While it may be difficult to definitively prove the existence of the Anunnaki or their direct influence on the Hurrians and Hittites, the similarities between these civilizations and their connections to the Anunnaki continue to captivate scholars and researchers who seek to unravel the mysteries of our ancient past. The pursuit of ancient knowledge, whether it is found in the legends of the Anunnaki or the historical records of the Hurrians and Hittites, reminds us of the enduring power of the human spirit to seek understanding and meaning in the world around us. As we continue to explore the mysteries of our ancient past and the countless civilizations that have shaped the course of human history, we are left with a sense of wonder and awe. The resilience and creativity of our ancestors, the stories of the Hurrians, Hittites, and the Anunnaki, 
serve as a testament to the potential of human achievement and the enduring quest for knowledge and understanding that has defined our species since time immemorial. Imagine we're about to embark on an odyssey across the world and through time, chasing the footprints of celestial beings known as the Anunnaki. From the fertile plains of Sumer to the pyramid-filled horizon of Egypt, the spiritual epics of India to the astronomical marvels of the Mayan civilization, to the philosophical minds of ancient Greece, we find their echoes. Each of these remarkable civilizations, despite their geographical distance and chronological separation, shares a common narrative, an interaction with beings from the skies, advanced entities that influence the course of their development. Intriguing, isn't it? So, fasten your seatbelts as we journey across the globe and explore the evidence of the Anunnaki influence on these diverse cultures. Time to traverse the ocean and delve into the mysteries of ancient India, an enduring civilization with a treasure trove of rich mythology and advanced understanding of mathematics and astronomy. Much like the civilizations we've explored thus far, ancient India also bears hints of possible extraterrestrial or Anunnaki influence. One of the most striking signs comes from the ancient texts known as the Vedas, written in Sanskrit over 3,000 years ago. These texts contain references to vimanas, flying chariots or machines capable of traveling in the air, underwater, and even through space. The detailed descriptions of these vimanas in texts like the Vimanika Shastra bear uncanny resemblances to modern interpretations of advanced aircraft or spaceships. Could these have been the vehicles of the Anunnaki, interpreted through the lens of ancient Indian culture? Interestingly, the Vedas and other ancient Indian texts like the Puranas and the Mahabharata also speak of powerful beings called Devas who descended from the heavens, possessed advanced knowledge, and often intermingled with humans. Some researchers suggest a link between the Anunnaki and these Devas, as both are depicted as celestial beings providing knowledge and guidance to mankind. Ancient India also excelled in areas like mathematics, astronomy, architecture, and medicine. The concept of zero, the decimal system, complex algebraic equations, all were understood and used in ancient India. Astronomy-wise, ancient Indians had knowledge of the planets in our solar system, could predict eclipses, and understood the heliocentric model of the solar system. This advanced knowledge is by some attributed to the influence of the Anunnaki. Finally, let's consider the architectural marvels of ancient India. Structures like the Brihadeswara Temple, the Konark Sun Temple, and the intricate stepwells of Gujarat all exhibit an understanding of complex geometries, precision, and knowledge of materials that were quite advanced for their time. Some researchers posit these as evidence of extraterrestrial assistance. The parallels drawn between ancient India and other civilizations' interaction with potential celestial beings add another layer to our discussion on the Anunnaki's possible global influence. Let's take a look into ancient Egypt, a civilization renowned for its grandiose architecture and rich mythology, to unearth potential signs of the Anunnaki. The pyramids of Egypt stand as a wonder for modern researchers. They are feats of engineering and design that remain challenging to replicate even with our current technology. Is it possible that the advanced knowledge and methods used in their construction were passed down by the Anunnaki? Then there's the Book of the Dead, a funerary text providing detailed descriptions of the afterlife and instructions for the soul's journey there. It includes spells, charms, and formulas for the deceased to use in the afterlife, demonstrating a deep understanding of metaphysical realities beyond the material world. Some proponents of the Anunnaki theory suggest that this spiritual knowledge could be a gift from these advanced beings. The pantheon of Egyptian gods is another area of interest. The gods were seen as immensely powerful beings capable of human-like emotions and interactions, and they often intervened in human affairs. Many of these gods were depicted with humanoid bodies and animal heads, evoking images of alien beings. One such deity, Thoth, the god of writing and knowledge, is often linked to the Anunnaki due to his role in imparting wisdom to humans. Moreover, the stories of the pharaohs, considered gods incarnate, align with Sumerian beliefs about kingship being lowered from heaven. The divine right of the pharaohs to rule could be interpreted as a parallel to the Anunnaki's assumed authority over humanity. The advanced civilization of ancient Egypt, with its monumental architecture, intricate belief systems, and knowledge of celestial bodies, resonates with the Anunnaki narrative. As with the Sumerians, could the Egyptians have received extraterrestrial guidance leading to their rapid advancements? Let's dive into the intricate civilization of the Mayans and explore the tantalizing possibility of a Nunnaki influence. 
The Mayan civilization, which flourished in Central America from approximately 2000 BC to the 16th century, left a significant mark on history through their impressive architectural feats, deep understanding of astronomy, and complex calendar systems. Could these achievements have been guided by extraterrestrial beings, perhaps the Anunnaki? The Mayan pyramids, for instance, are some of the most iconic structures from the ancient world. Constructed with a precise understanding of architectural design, geometry, and spatial organization, they evoke an eerie similarity to the pyramids of Egypt, thousands of miles away. Could this be a sign of an Anunnaki blueprint used in multiple ancient civilizations? The Mayans also possessed an astonishing understanding of celestial mechanics. They tracked planetary cycles, accurately predicted solar eclipses, and even recognized the precession of the equinoxes, a slow 26,000-year cycle related to Earth's rotation. The Mayan Long Count Calendar is famous for its supposed prediction of the end of the world in 2012. This complex calendrical system, together with their astronomical knowledge, suggests a level of sophistication that many theorists argue could be evidence of extraterrestrial guidance. In the realm of mythology, the Mayan god Kukulkan, also known as Quetzalcoatl in the Aztec culture, bears similarities to the Anunnaki. This feathered serpent deity was a bringer of knowledge, teaching the arts of civilization to humanity, mirroring the roles of Enki and Thoth in Sumerian and Egyptian mythology, respectively. Also fascinating are the Mayan artifacts and drawings that suggest contact with extraterrestrial beings. The Mayan ruler Lord Pakal's tomb, for example, contains carvings that some interpret as him operating a kind of spacecraft. Digging deeper into ancient Greece, we find further evidence that correlates with Anunnaki theories. The pantheon of Greek gods, renowned for their intervention in human affairs, complex relationships, and feats beyond human understanding, could potentially be interpreted as the Anunnaki's presence. Take Prometheus, one of the Titans, as a compelling example. Prometheus was deemed a hero to humanity, stealing fire from the gods and gifting it to humankind. This act of rebellion against his divine peers symbolizes the transfer of advanced knowledge, akin to how the Anunnaki was said to impart advanced technology and wisdom in the Sumerian texts. Moreover, let's consider the ancient oracle site of Delphi, believed to be the center of the world by the ancient Greeks. There, the high priestess, the Pythia, would enter trances and deliver prophecies. Could these trance states have been enabled by Anunnaki technology or knowledge, as some theorists speculate? Also, the legends of Greek demigods, born of a human and a god, echo the tales of the Anunnaki creating a hybrid human race. Figures like Hercules and Perseus, known for their superior strengths and abilities, mirror the Sumerian tales of the Anunnaki's influence on humanity's development. As we delve deeper into these ancient Greek stories, we can't ignore the thematic parallels to the Anunnaki narratives. These accounts, rich in symbol and mystery, offer tantalizing possibilities. Is it mere coincidence, or could it be evidence of extraterrestrial interactions? In examining these narratives and the uncanny resemblances they share with the Nunnaki theories, we add another layer to the complex tapestry of human history and our quest to understand our origins. Now we'll embark on an extraordinary journey, diving into ancient Sumerian texts, exploring uncharted territories, and uncovering secrets concealed by time. Prepare to uncover the sophisticated knowledge transmission systems and the mysterious legacy of an advanced ancient civilization. Are you ready? Well, hold on because it's about to get mythical. The Emerald Tablets are a series of mystical texts that have captivated scholars, alchemists, and spiritual seekers for centuries. Here we'll explore the many facets of these tablets. The Emerald Tablets are attributed to Thoth, the ancient Egyptian god of wisdom, who is also identified with Hermes Trismegistus in Greek tradition. These tablets are said to hold the secrets of alchemy, astrology, and the very fabric of reality itself. Comprising 13 parts, the emerald tablets reveal esoteric teachings that cover the mysteries of existence, the cycles of life, the unity of all things, and the laws of creation. They contain principles that are foundational to Hermeticism, such as, as above, so below. Within the tablets, there is a focus on the concept of transformation, both spiritually and materially. This includes the idea of transmuting base metals into gold, which is seen as an allegory for personal enlightenment and inner transformation. The teachings within the Emerald Tablets have had a profound impact on Western occultism. They have inspired various mystical traditions, including alchemy, Rosicrucianism, and theosophy. 
Many famous philosophers, scientists, and alchemists like Sir Isaac Newton have studied these texts over the centuries. The Emerald Tablets have been translated into various languages, with several different interpretations. These versions often reflect the cultural context and the philosophical beliefs of the translators, leading to diverse and rich readings of the text. While not directly linked, some researchers propose a connection between the wisdom in the Emerald Tablets and the knowledge imparted by the Anunnaki. This theory suggests that the teachings within the tablets may have originated from the same ancient wisdom that the Anunnaki sought to share with humanity. The authenticity and historical accuracy of the Emerald Tablets are subjects of debate among scholars and researchers. Some view them as authentic ancient wisdom, while others consider them a later creation. The original text's whereabouts also remain a mystery, adding to the allure and mystique. The Anunnaki, often described in ancient texts and modern interpretations, stand as one of the most enigmatic and influential entities in mythology, particularly in Mesopotamian traditions. The Anunnaki are primarily known from the Sumerian texts, where they were considered a pantheon of deities. They were said to be the children of the sky god Anu and the earth goddess Ki. These deities were credited with various roles in the creation and governance of the earth and were believed to reside in the heavens, often associated with different celestial bodies. Within the pantheon, the Anunnaki were not uniform in power or function. There was a clear hierarchy, with deities like Enlil, Enki, and Inanna occupying prominent roles. Some were involved in the creation of humanity, while others governed natural phenomena like the wind, water, and fertility. Several myths narrate the direct interactions between the Anunnaki and humans. For instance, the Epic of Gilgamesh describes the hero's encounters with these divine beings. These interactions were not always benevolent, they included both guidance and punishment. Some interpretations of the Anunnaki suggest that they possessed advanced technology and knowledge. This includes the ability to travel between their home planet, often identified as Nibiru, and Earth. Their technology could be responsible for some unexplained ancient artifacts and architectural marvels. The Anunnaki were not just rulers or creators, they were also considered teachers. Their teachings included laws, wisdom, and moral codes that shaped early human civilizations. These laws often served as precursors to later legal systems and ethical philosophies. In modern times, the Anunnaki have been subject to various interpretations and theories, including those linking them to extraterrestrial beings. Authors like Zechariah Sitchin have proposed that the Anunnaki were actually advanced aliens who visited Earth. The legacy of the Anunnaki permeates various cultures and has shaped many religious and philosophical systems. Their influence can be traced in Mesopotamian, Akkadian, Assyrian, and Babylonian cultures. Even today, the concept of the Anunnaki inspires literature, media, and spiritual movements. The Book of Enki is a compelling and intriguing piece of literature that delves into the Sumerian mythos, exploring the life and teachings of one of the key figures in the Anunnaki pantheon, Enki. Let's break down some of the essential aspects of this remarkable text. Enki, also known as Ea in Akkadian mythology, is one of the principal deities of the Sumerian pantheon. He's the god of wisdom, magic, water, and creation, playing a vital role in shaping humanity and the earth. The Book of Enki provides unique insights into his character, philosophy, and actions. One of the most fascinating aspects of the Book of Enki is its account of the creation of humans. According to this text, Enki played a central role in forming humans from clay, infusing them with divine essence. This act wasn't merely about physical creation but also imparting wisdom and consciousness. The book details Enki's complex relationships with other deities, including his rivalry with his brother Enlil and his role in mediating disputes among the gods. These interactions highlight the dynamics and politics within the Anunnaki pantheon. The book of Enki is not just a narrative but also a repository of wisdom. Enki's teachings encompass various fields such as science, astronomy, law, and ethics. His wisdom was considered a guiding light for rulers and scholars alike. Modern readings of the Book of Enki often explore its allegorical elements. Some researchers and authors view Enki's actions as symbolic representations of human evolution, consciousness, and the journey towards enlightenment. Others have drawn parallels between the Book of Enki and other creation myths from different cultures. The authenticity and interpretation of the Book of Enki have been subjects of debate among scholars. While some view it as a genuine ancient text, Others argue that it's a modern interpretation or even fabrication. 
The book's content also fuels discussions about the possible extraterrestrial origin of the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki and other ancient civilizations were said to have created hidden repositories of wisdom across the world. These repositories were meant to safeguard essential knowledge and were constructed to endure the ravages of time. Some argue that these could include the Emerald Tablets and other ancient texts. One such repository is the legendary Hall of Records, rumored to be located beneath the Sphinx's paws in Egypt. This mythical library is thought to contain the wisdom of the ages, including information about human history, the cosmos, and the universal laws of creation. Some believe that the Anunnaki had a hand in crafting these chambers and storing knowledge within them. Throughout history, various sects and societies have assumed the role of guardians and keepers of this ancient knowledge. They were tasked with preserving, interpreting, and transmitting these teachings through generations. This included a network of priests, mystics, and scholars working in unison to protect this sacred wisdom. The knowledge contained in ancient texts like the Emerald Tablets and the teachings of the Anunnaki has seeped into various aspects of modern intellectual and spiritual thought. Philosophers, scientists, and spiritual leaders have drawn from these reservoirs of wisdom to shape their theories, practices, and beliefs. Various secret societies, such as the Freemasons and the Rosicrucians, have been linked to the preservation and dissemination of this ancient wisdom. These groups often draw upon the symbolism and teachings found in these ancient texts, weaving them into their own rituals, beliefs, and practices. Efforts to uncover these hidden repositories continue today, with archaeologists, historians, and researchers seeking to find physical evidence of these ancient libraries and texts. These efforts are often met with controversy, intrigue, and sometimes resistance from various authorities. Besides the physical repositories, the ancient wisdom has also been transmitted through spiritual and mystical means. Various traditions, such as Kabbalah and Sufism, have carried forth these teachings through mystical experiences, meditative practices, and spiritual initiations. The transmission of knowledge from ancient civilizations like the Anunnaki and the legacy of texts like the Emerald Tablet provide a fascinating glimpse into human history's intellectual and spiritual journey. Whether viewed through a historical, mystical, or metaphorical lens, this continuous thread of wisdom underscores humanity's eternal quest for understanding, connection, and growth. The layers of myth, mystery, and meaning continue to invite exploration and interpretation, linking the past, present, and future in a dance of discovery and enlightenment. And there we have it, a journey across millennia where we've unraveled the intriguing connections between the Anunnaki, the Book of Enki, and the wisdom held within the Emerald Tablets. From cosmic alignments to hidden repositories of ancient knowledge, the legacy of these texts and beings echoes through our present-day understanding of science, philosophy, and spirituality. Perhaps we're still only scratching the surface of what's yet to be discovered. But as always, the thirst for knowledge never ends, so keep exploring, keep questioning, and remember, the journey of curiosity is an unending one. And as always, thanks for watching.